Hi, grade sevens. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to work on adding fractions. Uh, last day, what we did was we used fraction strips, and this allowed us to kind of to get our common denominators when we added fractions. So, what we want to do today is we want to kind of get a feel for how to add fractions without using fraction strips. So, we can just do it numerically, just with our basic numbers and fractions. So, I've outlined here, or I've, I've kind of highlighted what is the key idea. And this is really, really important. When you're adding and subtracting fractions, you must, you must have a common denominator. So, just a quick reminder, denominators are in the bottom. And so, what we need to do is create an equivalent fraction that has the same denominators. So, if you ever have trouble figuring out what a common denominator is, there's a couple ways you could go about figuring it out. One way is, you can just list multiples of your denominators. So, multiples of 3 would be 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24... You could do the same thing with 4, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and these go on and on. So you can see right away uh, our lowest common denominator, the smallest one you can see is 12, but also numbers like 24 would also be a common denominator, same with 36, there'd be 48 and others going up. You can really choose any of them, but it's it's usually easiest if you pick the smallest one. Okay. So in this case here, what we want to do is we want to write our fraction one-third as something over 12. And we want to write three-quarters as some number over 12 as well. Okay. Just a quick little tip, and I'll just write this here. If you're ever struggling to figure out what a common denominator is, and you don't want to list just all these multiples, uh, you can get a common denominator by simply multiplying the denominators together. So all you have to do is simply multiply denominators. So for example, in this case, 3 times 4, those are my two denominators, is 12 so we could use that that would be a common denominator that you could use it might not be the lowest one but it would still work for what you're doing so our next thing we need to do is we need to do this what number times 3 gives me 12 and you can see that's 4 so what I need to do on this side is to keep this an equivalent fraction, you have to multiply the numerator by 4. So 1 times 4 gives me 4. So 1 third is the same as 4 twelfths. Same thing over on the other side. We're going to ask ourselves, what times 4 gives me 12? And you can see, oh, that's just going to be 3. So therefore, to keep this equivalent, I need to do the same thing to the numerator. I'm going to multiply it by 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. I'm going to just put an equal sign here, and we're going to just keep working down. When you're adding fractions, here's the important thing. Your piece size is 12, so you're going to keep your denominator of 12. That tells you how big the pieces are. And then all you do is you simply add numerators. So for example, here you have four of the piece sizes that are out of 12, and you have nine of them, so four plus nine means you have 13. Now, I would always encourage you at the end, you should write your fraction in lowest terms. So ask yourself, can you divide these numbers by any number? In this case, you can't. But you could write this as a mixed fraction, which I think would be a good way to leave it. So you can see 12 goes into 13 one time, and you have 1 left over out of 12. So that's an example of adding a fraction. Let's roll to the second example here. We have 5 eighths over 1 quarter, or 5 eighths plus 1 quarter. 
So what we're going to do here is first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for a common denominator. Just a reminder, you could use the multiplying trick, like 8 times 4 is 32. That would be one way to get a common denominator. might not be the lowest. And in this case, you'll probably recognize, oh, 4 has multiples of 4, 8, 12, 16. 8 has multiples of 8, 16, 24. Hey, look, 8 is common to both. So we can actually write these out of 8. So this is what we're going to do. You can see 5 eighths is already out of 8, so I don't even have to change anything. It just stays as 5 eighths. But 1 quarter, I'm going to have to do something here. 1 times 4 gives me 8. Answer is 2. So therefore, I need to multiply my numerator by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. Now, last step here. And just put some equal signs here. We keep our denominator. It's really important. When we're adding fractions, the denominator tells us how big the pieces are. And our pieces, our, our cakes, are divided up into eight. So we're going to talk about everything being divided into eight. So we keep the denominator. And we go five plus two is seven. Good. There's some quick examples for how to add fractions.